What's up, America? It is Wednesday, and it's a fucking beautiful day. The birds are chirping. The snakes are uh, doing what snakes do. The grass is growing. Today's episode of the podcast is brought to you by Division Street Auto. You can catch Division Street Auto at 595 Division Street in Pawtucket, Rhode Island. Give them a call at 401-723-7080. Division Street Auto is great. You can get whatever you need done on your vehicle there. You know, from brake pads to engine replacements. They do the works. They're fairly priced, but that's not why I go there. I go there because they run on honesty and integrity. And whenever I get my vehicle fixed or maintained there, I always felt like... I can trust him, you know. My, my buddy George is, runs the joint, and he takes care of me. So if you need anything with the vehicle, go check him out. You can get 10%, 10% off all the labor when you mention this podcast. And we're also brought to you by Tops Showroom and Gallery and Electrical Distributor. Dis- distributor. Distributor. Give them a call at 401-861-0695. They're at 120 Point Street in Providence, and you can go... Get them. Um, I'm sorry. Anywho, you can go to Tops. You can get whatever you need, whether it's electrical connectors, wires, PVC, EMT pipe. Um, but they also do a lot for lighting. So you can get LED lighting, whether it's indoor, outdoor, landscape lighting, um, under cabinet lighting. And if you don't have time to go down there, you know, maybe you're running a business, maybe you got too much going on. They'll come out and do a field consultation for you and really kind of streamline that process to make it easy for you. So go check them out. Tell them the J2 podcast sent you. We're also brought to you by Onlyville Tire. Onlyville Tire is located at 6 Plainville Street in Providence. You go see the boss name. Her name is Do- go see the boss lady. Her name is Dory. They've been in business now, I think, since 1923, which is coming up on just 100 years which is insane that a local family-owned business has been able to sustain themselves in a, I would assume it's a competitive market. I mean, when I think tire shops, I think, you know, not the small guys. So the fact that she's able to keep keep shop open there is impressive. And whether you need new tires, used tires, you need to replace some tires, anything tires you think Onlyville Tire, go see Dory, tell her where you heard from us. And next up, we got JW and Son Construction uh, Property Management. They do commercial, they do residential, any kind of work you may need done for the home or business, whether it's, you know, cabinet making or I don't know if they do pools. I'm sure they do. Whatever it is, you know, new, um, renovating, hook them up. All right. Give them a call at 401 487-4134. Sorry, I got my co-host making me laugh. That's JW and Son uh, Construction. Tell them what you need. They can answer your questions much better than I can. Last but not least, we got DDP. And no, I don't mean Diamond Dallas Page. I mean Donkey Dodgers Poker. Donkey Dodgers Poker is a great way to get out of the house and have some fun and maybe play a game that you've been interested in playing. You know, poker. A lot of people play online but never live. Uh, DDP is a great way to go out, have a good night for twenty dollars. You can get a you know a, a dinner, you can play some cards and interact with some people that have some experience. But it's just a fun, casual, friendly way to learn the game or play the game and even win some money. Every night they have um, cash prizes for the winner and top two or three, however you do. Uh, but more importantly, they have s- certain events that if you play and you do well or if you play enough. You can actually win a seat into the main event, which is a $10,000 buy-in. So if you know anything about poker, it's kind of the Super Bowl of poker. Um, Just go check out DDP on Facebook. There's all the information there. They run at least one event every night, and they're all over the state. So check them out. Other than that, I just got my man Jay here with me today. Uh, We're going to have a good time. The Irish Assassin. And we're going to bring it to you hot in your eardrums like lava. Let's get it. Time to talk some shit with the J Squared Podcast. Here we go. Boom. Boom shakalaka. What's up, Jay, man? Fucking, what up? What up, everybody? I got my man here. What up, The what Filipino up? prodigy. We're going to give it to you hard and fast today. It's Wednesday. Talking to me? talking to you I'm talking to everybody i'm talking to america all right it's fucking wednesday as my man joey diaz would say it's wednesday if they come to your door you ain't doing nothing but slanging dick and handing out chopsticks 
Whoa, that's <laughs> pretty. <laughs> it's a pretty interesting segment. <laughs> you fucking, you got to follow Joey Diaz, man. He's hilarious, dude. You fucking. Anyways, so what's going on, man? What you got? I don't got shit. I went on a hike today. I know. I was supposed hike today. to. Go. Yeah, you blew me off, you motherfucker. He's like, I gotta be here early for George. Fuck you, dude. We got two hours. <laughs> I get well, it though. It's we talked about it last episode. You know, in it's, my experience of hiking, and it takes time. So I, you know, it can. You know, when you when you were hiking, was it with a woman? Yeah, exactly. You know, it's just like yeah, think of slow you down. Think of going life. grocery shopping. <laughs> think about <laughs> going grocery shopping. You down in life. You're in. You're out. Bing bang. Fucking done. You don't go up and down the aisles. You don't read the ingredients. You know what you're getting before you go there. That's how I close shop too. Same thing, man. You know, you know. Hey, I'm going to buy a black shirt. I'm going to buy a black shirt. If it doesn't fit, I'll bring it back. We're not going to play this whole. I'm fucking trying this on. Oh, this would look cute. Hey, let's go check this out. No, I don't fucking need anything in the candle aisle today. Right. You know, I'm here to buy clothes. That's what I'm doing. So where the fuck am I shopping anyway where they sell clothes and candles? Right. Exactly. <laughs> at, at Walmart. I'm not broke, bitch. Target. Target, maybe. <laughs> Target. I, always, I read a, a funny thing once like 10 years ago, maybe. I don't know. I might have heard it. I might have saw it on TV. But it said that Target is the walmart for people that think they're too good for walmart was it didn't you say this last well, i said I'm, I'm repeating it though oh no I, i'm not sure if you did i've said it many okay, times you know, right. but i've i've heard it before and i've said it and i thought i always thought it was too funny because it is you know like you expect a different environment when you walk into target but ultimately it's the same shit you know it's a big discount store that sells everything but you know what's different in all honesty the clientele yeah the environment yeah the people like I, I see some fucked up shit in Walmart. I think I, I posted it one time. I was literally standing in line, and the crypt keeper was behind me. I mean, like she looked. The fucking, tales from the crypt, dude. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? Like, no where did shit. you come from? What rock did you crawl out of? <laughs> She's yeah. like Smeagol from Lord of the Rings. I mean, she had like My just precious. like random strands of hair, like, <laughs> like what out of her. Fuck? You couldn't tell whether it was ear hair or head hair. Yeah, I saw another uh, another chick. She like literally, you could see like. She was wearing these stretchy pants, and you like you could see her ass, her f- huge, fat, white, pasty ass through her stretch. You turn like, it, you're turning me on. Like man, that is so sexy. It's uh, yeah, man. It's you know, I'm not, I'm not about to fat shame her. I'm fat too, but I, I'm not walking around wearing fucking yoga pants. You know, God, I hate that this, term, this, fat shaming. There's fucking kids around here. You know, like I don't want to traumatize them. Yeah, like, no regard for anybody. They don't give a flying fuck. Right? Isn't that weird that the attractiveness of somebody actually gives us a feeling? You know, like, if you look at somebody, a nice woman that's attractive, looks great, all the curves, you're like, wow, those, that's a fucking nice outfit. I'm glad she wore that. Thank you. But yeah. then you see somebody fat wearing the same outfit, and you're just like, oh, how dare they? How dare they? What gives them the right to wear what they want to wear just because it's comfortable? They should take our judgments into consideration before they get dressed i guess so well no i mean don't you think there's certain things that are appropriate for certain sizes and not appropriate because like, you don't want to uh, based, this way, this, this is based just like, on my <laughs> preference and what i want to see personally fuck yeah you know based on what i would wear yes do i think fuck it man if you want to wear whatever you want because you're comfortable yeah you have the right to do that you know i who the fuck oh, am yeah, i to say anything you absolutely know? i mean when it comes down to it, I don't really give a fuck. So when you, use, yeah, when you use the term appropriate, I don't think anything is appropriate or inappropriate. It's just about oh, I the, what you're able to to handle as far as you know feedback, whether it be wanted or unwanted, that you may receive. Yeah, I, I, I guess so. Yeah, when it comes down to it, I don't give a fuck what anybody's wearing or what they're doing. But I mean, as far as just a talking point and for conversation, like some, they're, they're uh, I don't know. I think <laughs> some people should not wear certain things. Give me an example. Um, a name of somebody you know who shouldn't wear something. No. Oh fuck no! I ain't doing that. <laughs> He's like, well, Josh, you shouldn't wear a thong again. Well, okay, let's add that to the list. <laughs> well, no, at least don't show it to people. If you are, I don't care. I don't care what fuck if you're wearing a thong. But I'm saying I'm wearing a thong. That's disgusting. Um, so the hike, anyways, man. The hike was it was tough. You know, I obviously you know I'm I'm doing the keto thing. I'm just trying to be a little more healthy. You know, I'm, uh, we talked about early. You know, just do one thing every day that's a little better than what I've been doing. Yeah, and I know it's just a walk. It's not a big deal, but no, it is. You know, it, it's something that I haven't been doing. You know, my my put yeah. my body through you know a couple miles today over terrain that it's not used to walk. I mean, my legs hurt. You know, they were hurting. It, sure I was your, getting your winded. Ankles might hurt from just supporting the yeah. the mass. Um, but you know, it was nice, and it, it was a really 
it's a humbling feeling, you know, and it's it's a motivating feeling because it, it was a day another day one for me. You know, I had a, a day one last week with a you know a new diet and kind of a new lifestyle change. I don't even I don't want to call it a diet anymore because I feel like diets come and go. You know, where I'm yeah. I'm just committing to be conscious of what I'm you know what I'm putting into my body and what my body is doing every day. And That's it great, sound, man. Yeah, it sounds silly because you look at me, it's like, bro, you're still fat as fuck. But it's going to be a journey, you know. It's going to start, and that's not what I see. I, I, I no, I see it though, still yeah. in the mirror. But I, you know, a lot of people, you know, I know we're fat shaming, and I make I I make fun of everybody. <laughs> but um, I, I think it's great. Like when I see fat people in, in the gym, and <laughs> and uh, <laughs> sorry, you know, I, I I applaud them. I'm like, yeah, fuck that. Don't don't settle. Don't you know gives a fuck what everybody's thinking if you're struggling i mean even if people are making fun of you fuck fuck them who and cares if, if you really have a even hard if time if, it, if, you, <laughs> if you have a hard time and you're worried them. about what people think go hike in the woods ain't nobody out there oh yeah <laughs> that's fucking that's why i said it was pretty humbling man you know not just because uh you know doing something and having the discipline to say and follow through with it you know because i've been talking about going hiking for right. a few days you're putting now. action to words exactly um uh, but you're all alone out there you know and and there you get to a point you know where i'm i'm in this trail and i can't hear cars anymore you know i don't see any buildings you choked I don't the see mountain anything. line it got close you know there's this <laughs> fucking there was a wolf I, I didn't have to hurt it. i was able to outrun it though you know I'm, I'm agile um but yeah so you're standing there and you you realize like fuck how much how minuscule we are you know oh, how I was irrelevant say and this is yeah. i was in a very small wooded area compared to this town right then the state then you know the country then the globe and you just start to think man how fucking small we are in this this on this earth you know and obviously you can oh, yeah. take it a step further and go to uh you know the galaxy the unit wherever yeah um but i was just like wow you know and, and every day is so consumed by you know technology whether it's television or netflix yeah. facebook your phone the nine to five just the grind man so i'm gonna try i i gonna make it a point to just spend more time in nature man you know it's it was just a, a really um not meditating therapeutic feeling. therapeutic that's the word i'm looking for that's exactly Ooh. what was my experience when beth and i started it was a couple years ago last year we didn't because of my shoulder but um same exact feeling and i know i know that feeling mm. what exactly what you're talking about when you're just so you know what you know what's scary is that and this is why you probably should hike or walk with somebody just in case something happens, a medical emergency or whatever, for whatever reason. Like, if you're in the middle of the woods, nobody would ever find you. You know what mm. I'm saying? They'd be like, oh, fuck. But anyway, other than that, I mean, being surrounded by all of the woods, like, and some parts of the woods gets actually dark. And when you're, like, deep in the brush and, like, you're just like, man, this is kind of, it is humbling. It's mm. It gives you a weird feeling of... Um, uh, like you said, being minuscule, like, like insignificant, almost. insignificant. I guess that's the word. Yeah. Um. So like, when you start going up mountainside, and I've we only did Monadnock, um, and a couple other small things, but even that in and of itself is like, wow, this is very humbling. It's it's a, it's an amazing feeling to be on top of uh, of a mountain like that and, and look at you know. Everything. I, I don't know. I don't want to sound like I'm a you know I'm a tree hugger, but I have a definitely, definitely, definitely a greater pre appreciation for being you know outdoors and hiking and nature walks and whatever. Just yeah. exploring, just lo looking at shit, looking. I don't know. It's living, man. You know. Yeah. It's like it's like actually, real life, right? You know. That's it, what it feels like. It's it's nature. You know. It's yeah. Just it's unaltered. It's untouched. You know. There, you feel there's no chin. Right. Right. You kind of. You do, you know, because ultimately we're very different. Obviously, people were part of that, you know, like we we come from the same thing, that same kind of. I don't even know how to explain what I'm trying to to say, but it was definitely humbling. It was definitely cool, you know. I, I would, yeah, I'm, gonna happy for you, I'm gonna continue to do it. Um, I'm not, and I'm not really a nature guy, you know. Like I don't love fishing. Was I, I. I hate bugs. I'm fucking afraid of bugs, you know. Like my my girl has to kill them if they're in the house. Yeah, I don't do fucking. I don't like dirt. I don't like sand. I never really did. But I knew that um, walking around the block or in the neighborhood is, is boring. You know, it's not the same. And uh, I don't know. It was, cool. was it, So that trail that you were on, that actually went how far into the woods or whatever? Did it tell you? Um, like, it, it was, I think, was a, a two-mile two loop or it something? Was a two, it was a 2.25-mile loop. 
He didn't have any problems with the rocks and roots and fuck yeah, dude. It was oh yeah, it was torturous. It was hard. Yeah, you yeah, know, I, yeah. I, I I didn't. The only thing I didn't like, I stopped a few or? times. Yeah, it was a thousand feet up. It was uh really yeah. You did well, that your first time. I don't know. the The key on the little map said zero feet up, a thousand feet up. So maybe a thousand feet was just a guide, like a, a key to right. measure how. I didn't oh. look too much. The only thing I looked at was the distance, and I saw it went from zero to a thousand. Right. But that may not be the. Everything was inclined, though, you know, for the first half, and then it looped back, and then I walked the same trail back. Right. You know what That's I mean? So the start and end was in the same place. Go ahead. You've been in that place, uh, Purgatory? Chasm? Yeah. I think so. Yeah, I've been to that place a few times. It's got really cool. I yeah, I just seen it. I heard that's yeah. pretty dangerous, though. It's like, fun as all the fuck. I mean, it's, it's people be dying and shit. Want. No, it's as dangerous as you want. I mean, you know, there's areas where you can walk down like rock hills or whatever, and then there's areas that I'm not getting my ass into. You have to like scoot down and kind of climb down. Well, there's one. There's one area that's like probably three feet, maybe two feet wide, and it goes for a, a good section. Yeah, fuck through. that. Then you're like yeah. that free I'm solo sure motherfucker. Get, yeah, I'm pretty sure people. <laughs> yeah, right. There. But you can walk. You can walk that whole trail all the way around. It's like I think there's two or three different trails, and then it goes. One of them goes through rocks. The other one goes up the mountain. And whatever. Hey, no word of a lie. So it probably took us two and a half, three hours up, and then three hours down, or something like that. in so I forgot how long it took us, but I, I mean, I struggled all the way up. There was like old ass people passing me, just like I'm like, how the fuck are they doing this? People with like, you know. I, I was just amazed. Yeah, and they're like all happy, go lucky. They're yeah, like, they're like hey, how you doing? <laughs> and you're like, fuck you, it's always easier on the way down, bitch. <laughs> yeah, I mean, actually, you know what? Even coming down, like you use different muscles to prevent yourself from, from falling, falling yeah. forward. And like, so I mean, it, the whole, yeah, the whole thing is is just, I I love it, actually, I to tell you the truth. Mm. I, I think it's like a new. I hated it. It was like, it, to me, it's it's kind of like, it's not as bad as, you know, going to the gym and working out. But it's one of those things where as I was doing it, dude, and again, it, it's definitely because I'm out of shape, you know, but it was painful, yeah. you know, like I was walking, my legs were hurting, I was out of breath, but finishing it felt good. Yeah, you know, absolutely. And I, I 100% feel that there's so much mental behind, you know, walking or jogging or just kind of pers yeah, just persevering, you know, so the fact that it was nice to look at and, you know, I... I was in a an element that I'm not used to. You know, everything is new to me and it's unpredictable. You know, like I saw a few uh, small animal, like critters out there. Yeah. You know, whatever. I don't fucking know. Groundhogs, squirrels, Gorillas. wolves, whatever. I think I could definitely go further in a trail in the woods like that than I could just walking on a paved road in the community. Because right. I think I would just get bored and then say, all right, I'm tired. I'm over this. Right. Where with that, I actually just, you know, I push and push and push. It's like an obstacle that exactly. you need to overcome. Correct. Yeah. Oh, that's cool, man. That's cool. So, yeah, I think so. So if anybody has any, um, you know, any recommendations, any trails in the state, you know, I don't mind taking a little ride, but, you know, anything within 20 miles of Johnston or Providence, anything in the state, really, Rhode Island, you know, shoot me a recommendation, shoot me a, you know, a message or drop a comment actually on the podcast or the, one of the YouTube videos, um, you know, and I'll take a quick video and, and show you how it was and what the experience was like. It was, it was cool, but I'd like to do more, you know, I'm trying to do or I, sh I hate when i say i'm trying to do something my, yeah, you one of my, do or you don't right one of my old bosses taught me like try is when you have the intent to fail you know you tell your girlfriend you're gonna try to make it to dinner at her parents house but when you want to do something you just do it so right i'm gonna do at least two a week you know i'd like to do two different ones a week but if i have to walk the same trail twice so be it yeah there's tons of tons and that's of that out, out there to walk and whatever whether it be just flat ground trails or actual hiking or whatever mm -hmm. so yeah this was i f the first you know i felt the incline it wasn't you know i was no obviously i wasn't scaling a mountain right but i could feel it was an incline you know that that oh, part yeah, of your burn. muscles when you're going uphill yeah and on the way you know finally at that second you know on the way back i could feel it was definitely a decline so i was up i don't know how many feet but you should have taken some pictures oh i did oh did you, did yeah, you post yeah, them or anything see. or no not yet no yeah oh, that's i'm gonna cool. you know i'm gonna make a little, little video yeah, a little yeah, skit, yeah, yeah. little skitsy skit. That's that, man. Cool. I see, like you know, I'm uh, when I'm scrolling on Facebook and I and I see everybody posting about certain things. Like some people are on a whole different level of mountain climbing and hiking, and you're like, man, well, I'm probably when am I going to get to that that point and mm. X, Y, and Z? But it, you know, that's that's all posting outside of. 90% of the people posting about all the political shit and the Mueller report and, and Smollett and whoever, yeah. and et cetera, et cetera. 
But speaking of the Mueller report. Clean segue, uh, bro. Yeah. <laughs> clean, bro. clean segue, bro. <laughs> go from hiking to, to Mueller report. Speaking of the Mueller hey, report, it's a, ice cream <laughs> <laughs> That's a hard segue, man. I'm not going to lie. Go from nah, hiking to I, well, Mueller. <laughs> before we even get, because we do want, I want to talk about, you know, Mueller. You mentioned that, and everybody's talking about it, so it's important. But I. I don't want to beat up the rock climbing, but you just said, you know, p- so many people are more advanced and you recommend you guys both recommended that uh, free solo movie. So I did check it out. Yeah. What'd you think oh, about that? That, mother- that motherfucker is out of He's his fucking, fucking mind. He's out of his fucking mind, man. Um, it, obviously, it's incredible. Some people are just different, you know, and they're more extraordinary than us, which is crazy to think. Because uh, if you ever listen to David Goggins, I don't know if you know who that is, but mm. he's I believe he's an ex Navy SEAL. George, can you pull any of Oh, wait, I think thing? I do know um, what you're about to talk about. But he used about. to, you know, he just used to be a fat fuck, and he just changed his life, and now he does, I believe he does ultra marathons, man. You know, like 100-mile races right. and shit like that. And yeah, ultra, he... Ultra marathon runner, ultra distance cyclist, triathlete, motivational speaker, author... Right. Used to be a Navy SEAL and an Air Force Tactical Air Control Party member. Just a, a fucking badass human. Oh. And he lives and dies by, because I'm just telling you this free solo guy, this climber, who, if you haven't seen the documentary or the movie Free Solo, check it out. This guy doesn't just climb rocks and mountains. He does it with no harness, no ropes. Like flat face. And yeah, and he does, he doesn't climb. Scaling. You know, he's scaling flat surface. And the only way he's able to get from one place to another is not like a ledge that he can grab with his hand and pull himself up. It's just these slight indentations and imperfections in the rock or, or a rock where the crack may be enough for him to fit his fingers in, you know, and instead of being able to pull himself up, he would pull, pull out, out horizontally and use that kind of forearm strength and hoist himself. Oh my God, it was insane. Like to, to th- imagine doing that in a controlled environment with equipment built to do that it still sounds torturous yeah never mind doing it in the elements you know 2000 i think the mountain he ended up doing it on was 3000 feet high and it was just so i'm to myself i'm thinking he's just a different breed of human and some people have that drive and they're possessed almost with something and then david goggins you know this guy who is an ex navy seal <laughs> Um, author, motivational speaker, and he runs these ultra marathons, hundred mile races. He's fully committed to the belief that nobody's extraordinary. He's started out as just a regular guy, and just keeps putting in the work and putting in the work and putting in the work. So well, I, I believe that too. I mean, I do to an extent, but <clears> it's <throat> just there's such a disconnect from somebody like you or me and the guy to in somebody solo. that's fucking yeah, climbing a three thousand foot flat rock with no rope. Did you see the part where he had to, like, kick his leg up? And I think they call lean. that one, like, the karate kick or some shit. Yeah, or something yeah. like that. I'm like, that's crazy because now you're off he's balance. Like, he's like, now I have to jump to this rock. Yeah, I'm like, what? <laughs> he's like, like so if you see here with these indents, I can get my right ring finger and my right index finger and my left thumb in this groove. Now I just have to jump to the next section. Right. Like, what, bro? And grab on with my eyelashes. Like, what <laughs> the fuck? I loved when he was explaining the moves in detail, almost like their names and like positions, like yes. almost like a karate move. Yes. He was like, Yeah, have you ever seen the movie Um Sherlock Holmes with Robert Downey Jr.? No. So the way that he would explain his moves and Robert Downey Jr. in the movie just did it at, in a fight, he'd be like, you know, thumb to rib cage, right elbow to left um temple right. you know left uppercut to bottom of chin like and he just kind of ran through him like it was a scientific right um whatever so in that movie free solo there's one point where he's explaining all the all positions and the movements and he's just like index finger to groove left thumb into cortex right thumb replaces left thumb into cortex pivot out and i'm like what the fuck bro yeah he has it all planned out already yeah, it's, it's like, like a, exactly that's how he sees things that's incredible man it is yeah a- absolutely and there's another movie uh that i think i told you to to check out too is it's called may rue i was gonna say like debbie does dallas yeah <laughs> speaking <laughs> no of getting. speaking of rock climbing yeah have you seen clock cock climbing volume three <laughs> cock climbing <laughs> but uh yeah no even may rue is a, is a great documentary too on netflix and it's about rock climbing i think it has some of the same people that were helping film uh free solo mm. I, th- I think it's jimmy chin it would, I would assume that that network of like 
it's filmographers, very small. yeah. Like how many people are like, hey, we got to film rock climbers because you have to kind of get up in those elements with them, right? With and stay out of their way. Which and stay out of their way. Yeah, and I know that was a big factor. This guy, they, I mean, even those guys, they got to be a little fucking wacko too. Like you're not even going up there with just your gear. You're going up with cameras and fucking mm. all. You got to haul that shit up there and fuck that. And then stay up there and film out of this, you know, like. But I mean, hey. Cheers to fucking drones. Yeah. Well, imagine, you know? imagine being the drone pilot like 20 feet away from his face when if you if you make a wrong move or you distract him, that fucking left thumb does not. Yeah. But that's actually him. they talked about that in the documentary. They said, you know what? They don't want to take a certain shot because if he falls, that's what they're, you know, like I think it was a down shot. I don't think or something that, like that they were more concerned with having the recording like if you were to fall. I think they just didn't want there to be any chance ever that he, yeah, that he, that it would interfere and remind him that it's being recorded. So you know, had he looked, oh. glanced up, right? They don't want him to see the cameras, you know, because. But how they were able to get those shots, man, was it was it's just incredible. You know, I can't really do it justice by explaining it. You got to see it for yourself. Yeah, it is pretty epic. I mean, especially the close-ups when he's like grabbing onto like the rock with his fingertips or his boot or something. Those are yeah, because you really get to see that he's not grabbing on. He's yeah, it's like just touching. barely touching and using brute strength. His, I can't even explain it. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. So speaking of drones, let's right. talk about Mueller. All right, so what you got? <laughs> Tell us about the Mueller case. So, Actually, so no, first, I don't really even know about it. I, I think I know the the big. The, the bigger story, and it, I, I think the the headline is, you know, Trump was exonerated, obviously, from all the charges of collusion with Russia during the 2016 um, elections. And I think it's a huge thing. I mean, because since then, and I don't, again, I don't want to necessarily go into left versus right bullshit, whatever, because it exists, whatever, we know that. But since 2016 and since he's been the president, there's been this, this constant push Russia, and lie Russia. for... You know, totally smearing this guy again, to only to come to find out that it's it was nothing. Now, granted, could it still be something, and we just don't know. Yes, but I saw a clip on on um, the View, the show, the View. The, you know, those chicks, mm. they're talking about Trump and the exoneration and blah blah, and they're still pushing the. Well, I have questions. What about this and what about that? They're, they're still pushing the lie, even though the facts came out already. The facts so far. So, I mean, like, I don't know what it is with certain people in certain parties, especially now with the left. Like, I'm like, let it fucking go. Like, let, uh, you know, can you give this guy any, is there any room just because you don't like him or what? I don't know. I don't know what it is. It's It starts to get irritating after a while, you know? Yeah, it's been going That's on for a while. the president of the United States. That's our, you know. Right. So, I think naturally you should want him to succeed. Yeah. You know, if you really have these terrible... Um, ideas about who he is and if you disagree with everything he stands for or if you you just don't believe in his abilities to read the country lead the country you should you should want him to prove you wrong you know what i mean like right. you want him to do well ultimately i mean it's just like a never-ending battle you know hearing it is the left argue against trump and you know the right that support him you know just blindly support him it's kind of like a, a headache man Ultimately, it hasn't. I just want to live my life. You know, I'm I'm not too concerned with what he's doing. Obviously, I don't want him to lead us into some some crazy nuclear war. I f I pay attention to him and the politics a lot less now than I did two years ago, just because it really sounds like the same revolving, you know, regurgitated story every right. couple days in the news. You know, it's like, hey, this is what he did, and it doesn't really sound that serious to me. Right. And it just seems like, all right, we're blowing another, we're building another mountain out of another molehill and just chasing what? What are we chasing anymore? You know, I, what? I, I have lost, sorry, I don't mean to cut you off. I, I have lost the, I, the narrative from the, like, what is your point? What are you trying to accomplish? Right. Like, wh where are you going with all of this? And, that, and that's what turns me off. And that's where I lose respect, I guess, for not only just the party as a whole, but even certain people that constantly regurgitate those things and i'm like wh what are you trying to do like right are you trying to i don't know because I, I don't know i don't even understand your right like, like, Rachel Meadow, like he's not getting impeached she, she goes on tv <laughs> they're right. not just exactly. gonna come and say you're not the president sir but like, think about what would happen even if he did get impeached then michael pence would step up and now you have even more conservative because mm. pence is, is like probably fivefold conservative than trump 
So now what? So now well, you want to impeach him too? Like, I don't know. <laughs> just impeach yeah, everybody just, until it's Oprah? What yeah. the fuck are you going to do, you weirdo? So, <laughs> and then you have, I think her name's Rachel Meadow. She's on TV literally crying because of the Mueller report. Like, you're crying because our president didn't collude with Russia? <laughs> like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, I don't even get it. It's just such an act. You know, I it's such so. an act and it's such an agenda to. And, but, the, but by crying, you play on the things that the people that still watch the news and still really are so involved in you know news that comes on television man think about that shit it's all for ratings it's literally a show it's a form of entertainment and people that are so involved in that they're invested in these invested in these characters that these people are playing on tv and i feel like they're just using that to their advantage you know the networks there do you think that this woman was really that upset where if she had any job in the world, think about that. Mm. When's the last time you went to work and somebody just started crying their eyes out because of how something political happened? Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't happen, you know? So it's just a, come on, cut the bullshit. It's not real life. It's It's not not real fucking life. What she's doing up there is not real. It's an act. Yeah, I guess so. But I mean, if you're, here's how I look at it. If you're going to act, if you're going to go through the charade, do it in a positive light. Do it that benefits you. That doesn't make you look like well, she's getting a paid an idiot. A lot of money to do that. Yeah, I guess you so. know, like a lot of times that 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 is the motivator for people. Yeah, you know? it's fucking her boss is saying, "Hey, we really need you to play up this Mueller report," and she's like, "All right, I got this." <laughs> I yeah. think he did it. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, what do you? Uh, I don't know. Anywho, what's the I, other thing? I, I I'm sorry. Do you have something else to add on that? Or? Oh no, no, that, that was just in general. I was throwing that out there because uh you know one it's all over facebook it's all over the news i don't necessarily yeah. watch the news anymore and actually i even even on facebook i kind of even just scroll past like well when you see the you see like, the uh the usual suspects sharing the usual shit it's like all right i know this person didn't read the article they yeah. just saw in the headline that trump is a bad guy so they shared it you know right. or i know this person didn't read the article he just saw the headline and said you know fuck thugs blue lives matter and share the article whatever the case is you know it's the right. usual suspects sharing the same bullshit over all the time so i kind of committed to just trying to share funny shit and make people laugh you yeah. know like i don't really care too much you know i got a lot I of friends like that, the information i what i don't like is uh yeah i don't know there, there's there's certain certain things i like about it certain things i, I don't like does it really affect my life like not too much, Not man. Too much at all. Nope. You still got to get your bread. I, I find it disheartening, and it saddens me a little bit that you know it seems like you know he's. You still have to respect the seat. You know, I don't care if you really don't like him. He's still the president of the United States. That's our, you know. So I mean, and in that aspect, and I, I relate that back to the, like my military service. There was tons of people that were above me, higher ranking, that I fucking hated, and I hope they died, and I didn't give a fuck. But I still have to respect the rank. You know, I, I got to give them that In the military, say. when they're your yeah. boss, yes. But right. as a citizen, I don't think that everybody has to respect the president. And I think that that that's kind of who we are as a nation. You know, nobody can force you to respect somebody just because of a title they hold. I mean, we're here because we disrespected our leaders so much where we decided to no longer be a part of that or, you know, their community you would say that country we wanted our independence right you know so you don't you don't have to respect the president i mean you can't kill him you can't threaten him i don't but you don't him personally and i i mean you don't the, have to respect the seat, the seat. I, I think I think a patriotic person should. That's just my opinion. Right, but obviously. again, that I feel like that opinion is it's sort of like saying really respect well, police officers. That Not, that that opinion that you have yeah. though, I think, is really swayed from your prior military service. Probably, hundred I mean, percent. It has to be. Well, I mean, that's just like saying you know somebody who otherwise. I mean, it's probably swayed from some other life experience. You know. Yeah, but you know, the the military is a a very deep kind of rooted experience that you have that you never forget and there's a lot of things that stick with you and i think respect in the hierarchy of a chain of command is one of those things where oh, it's, it's not really a. and when you say you have to respect the seat what do you mean i mean i, I don't I, well i'm not saying that you have to i think you should I but think, what do you mean I by respect the, the seat the position the position he's the president so sh- are he you- or she whoever it may be is still the president so of the should United you States. not say bad things about them if you feel them 
Oh, well, no, there's always criticism. There's always constructive criticism. It's it's sort of like like I was about to say, uh, respecting, in general, you should just respect police officers and teachers and, and firefighters. And I think you should you respect know. people. I don't well, think the, yeah, the title they hold, I don't think their job warrants any more respect than I respect you. Well, I don't necessarily agree with that, but I understand what you're saying. I, you know. But what I, do you mean? That, like, I'm still not, when you say respect the seat, you said you don't have to like them personally. Do you mean like if you meet him, you should shake his hand and say, thank you, Mr. President? I, I don't even know. I don't even know what I mean by that. But I mean, it's it's kind of like along the same lines of saying you should respect military members or veterans or whatever, or, you know, anybody that what I think goes uh, a little bit further for the country as a whole, not necessarily personal or special interest or agenda, you know, like. I think they deserve a little bit, maybe a clap or a handshake or something. I don't fucking know. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> I mean, obviously, you know, I know a lot of people that are that still serve that prior service, and when you're in the military, you meet a lot of people, you know, and with that experience and then my experience outside of there, and I don't know what drives me to feel this way, but I don't think that picking one job, i.e., the military, over a non you know, if your belief is not with the military, if you pick a different job, that you should be granted any higher level of prestige or respect than anybody else. So you, you think know? the finance guy should get the same respect as a Navy SEAL? I think, yeah, war? absolutely. I no. think uh, I think you should, you know, accept their wisdom on certain, <clears throat> you know, um, topics, you know, maybe their expertise. You know, I, I see the value in that. I'm not discrediting that. But I'm saying as a human, I'm not, I don't value you oh, humans yes that, but that's all that's all it is you know and at this point in my life that's what i feel you know i'm not i don't think that you're any better of a person because you took a job especially because i know a lot of the reasons that people do join the military yeah. you know some i don't know if it's most i don't know if it's less is not for the greater good of the country you know my reasons for joining wasn't because i'm a patriot and i wanted to go kill iraqis it was because like i was out of school you know i didn't really have a plan and they were going to give me money up front, you know, a signing bonus. Right. I'd have a job. It was a way to get some stability. You know, it wasn't. Th let me ask you this. Isn't that easier said because there are certain people that are doing those jobs that get higher respect? Meaning, good thing that we can sit here and talk about this. And we were in the service. Um, mm -hmm. But good thing that there are people that, are, that want to be Navy SEALs and that actually do those things and put their lives in danger to protect our country. Um, even more so than your average, let's say, airman, soldier, sailor, whatever, um, I think that they deserve a little more respect than, let's say, somebody who doesn't want to put out, put, put out, doesn't want to put up or put out. Damn, bro. Doesn't want to <laughs> it's like if you're, not, if you're not fucking, you can go fuck yourself, lady. <laughs> no, I mean, it's somebody that doesn't want to sacrifice anything for their country. I'm like, geez, well, that's kind of selfish. That's the other extreme. It's you just, it's in a, it, to me, it's in addition, you know, like, all right, if that's a, another trait that you have, I respect that trait about you. Right. But as a person, I don't respect you anymore because you chose this job over this job or this career path over this career path. Because at the end of the day, man, if it comes down to it, if the, mili re the military really needs people and there aren't enough volunteers, we're going anyway. You know what I mean? Like, well, yeah, but how about saying, you know, the fact that let's say we're not in a time of need and there are people that still will do that. Because it needs to happen. Somebody needs to do it. It's beautiful. You right. know, I, I, and I, I thank them for that. Think, you know, it's awesome. But I, I don't think that that deserves yeah. a little more respect than, let's say, this is, again, I'm just speaking for me personally, than, let's say, the guy that says, oh, no, I'll let somebody else do it. Because somebody else will do it. Fair. I understand. Yeah, you know point. what I'm saying? So, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm appreciative of it. But again, you know, as a, as a person, I don't think. I don't value their life. Yeah. Like, meaning, I, I on just a think. Human level, like, I think respect but, is respect, and there aren't levels to it. You know oh, what I mean? Well, like I, I believe there is. Well, I, and I understand that, but yeah. I I think there are there are levels and barriers that come down, and you become more casual with somebody. You know, like if I meet the president, I'm going to say, "Hey, thank you, Mr. President." But if I meet, um, or I might say, "Thank you, President Trump," whatever whatever your title is. Right. But that's no different if I meet, you know, Mr. Wallace, and I say, "All right, nice to meet you, Mr. Wallace." I'm still going to shake his hand. Mr. I'm still going to look at whoever he is. You know, just oh, a random dude, David Mickey Wallace. Smalls? No, David what are you Wallace. About Wallace from like David Wallace, bro, CEO oh. of Dunder Mifflin. Okay, come on. <laughs> you know, so I, I don't know. You know, I think you can be you can be grateful for things that they've done. I think a brave heart, but William I think Wallace. <clears throat> a, yeah, there you go too. He's a fucking patriot. Um, you know, I just I think respect is respect. Either you respect somebody or you don't. You know, and and the the things that they've done or the things that they've accomplished. You know, they're cool. You know, and and it, I'm appreciative of military. Obviously, I support it. I'm thankful that there are people that 
you know, do the things that I don't want to do. Right. You know, but you know what else I don't want to do? I also don't want to fucking rub somebody's feet and give them pedicures all day. And there's a big community and a lot of people that do that. So I don't have to go do that. But that's not a necessity for, for life. That's. All right. Let me, let me say this. I don't want to, you know, clean up guts and save people's lives and, you know, like deal doctors, with the traumatic shit. Yeah. Like, or EMT workers. Or I that's why they deserve out, more respect. I don't want. I uh, see. I, I just when you say more respect, I can't see it that way. Because I'm, I'm. I think they I'm deserve glad a thanks. Appreciative. Of... I think they deserve a thanks. You know. Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, that's <clears throat> kind of along the same lines, right? And they do, dude. The military gets a, a lot of thanks, bro. You know, service people. I've seen it. I've done it. Um, I don't do it so much anymore because I don't run into service people as much as I used to. But prior service, you know, of course, thank you. You know, for your service because you made a decision and people don't have to. But when it comes down to it, I don't I don't respect that person any more than I respect, you know, the guy that's cooking my dinner, you know, or the guy that picks up my trash fucking oh, I do. once a week. Yeah, that's that's, that's fair. I mean, it's personal uh, differences, but right. I mean, I looking at a I, again. Uh, let's take a firefighter. You know, I'm not running into a, a building on fire. I'm just not doing that. I don't give mm. a fuck. You know what I'm saying? Maybe if my, obviously, <clears throat> with the right motivation, if my child was in there, if, mm. you know, that kind of thing. But I'm saying, like, on the average day-to-day, you know, I'm just not, I don't think you could pay me enough to run into a building that's on fire. So, hey, good thing that there are people. I totally respect the fact that you have the the balls to do that. And, mm. you know, I, I give that to you, you know. So I I would I respect that over, let's say, the guy who, I don't know. Who doesn't do that? <laughs> like me. Fair. <laughs> you know Fair. what I'm saying? I, I, anyway, that's just personal opinion. But going back to the presidency, I oh, think that's where that started. I think the seat deserves again. I, I, this is me personally. I think All the right. seat deserves respect. Continue. Just got to take a leak. Yeah, go ahead. So what are we gonna? Oh, who am I, I talking to then? <laughs> I can hear you. People are listening. All right. So Joshua went to go take a piss, and I guess I'm just gonna talk to you guys. Um. I think the seat deserves respect. What do you think, George? <laughs> <laughs> you just laugh at me. <laughs> what do you mean by respect? <laughs> Can you hear him pissing? Yeah, on it's him? like Niagara fucking falls. Oh, come on, man. Figure- All right. Back, boys. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> if we had a guest here, it would have been an issue because I could talk to them. But <laughs> Uh, I mean, remember, you're talking to thousands and thousands of people right now. Oh, yeah. I was looking at the camera going, whatever. But anyway, just to <laughs> wrap this up, if if you if you want to wrap it up. Uh, I Always just, wrap it up. You don't want kids. Again, it's just, you know, I, I relate it, again, to the being in the service. You know, there's people that I fucking hated that were higher ranking than me and in charge. And not I didn't answer to them. Let's say they were fucking generals. I don't give a shit. Captains or whatever. Blah. But I respect the fact that. They put in their time and did that, et cetera, et cetera. So I respect the rank, just and that's what you're saluting, and that's what you're, you know, ultimately doing all the customs and courtesies for the rank, mm-hmm. not necessarily the person. I don't know the person. I don't give a fuck. Right. You're just respecting the patch. Yeah. Pretty the much. little symbol on their chest. That's how I feel about the president. You know, like, okay, man, you made it to the presidency, so I don't necessarily like you, but you're the president, and I'll give you that much. Anyway, I guess I th- maybe we just have different definitions of res- what respect is. Yeah. Knows. Anywho, but yeah, you know, I don't discredit it. Obviously, thank you for your service. I just, I'm, I'm worries, at a yeah. point where you know, uh, a human life is a human is a, life. Yeah, pr- people are people. Respect. If you just respect everybody, you know, it's it's easier. Other than like pedophiles, I don't respect them. Well, why not? Because it's too. yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> it's just they're they're just that's fucked up. I don't want to explain to you why you what? respect <laughs> pedophiles and I don't. You, no, you. <laughs> based upon your logic, you said people are people. So even murderers, people, people pedophiles. Is people. If you're murdering pedophiles, I'm all about it. <laughs> <laughs> you got my back. You go and see fucking. Uh, never mind. Anywho, um, so what was next? You you mentioned Mueller, and then the other thing that's kind of everywhere is this. What's his name? Jesse Smollett. Jesse. This fucking what kind of name is that? stupid. Fuck J-U-S-S-I-E. Jussie. Sounds the like his mother was calling him a hussy and just, she was like Spanish. So she's like, Jussie, Jussie. What? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's a, it's a stupid, he, what, a, what an ass nugget this person is though. I mean, I, I've never heard about him until this whole, you know, MAGA wearing Nazi hood having people fucking fall, yelled out, why I hate niggers and punched him in the face, whatever his story was. Doesn't this you know. fall into the typical characterization of the left though? And I hate saying that because like, I don't, yeah. I, it's like they're, 
they're painting this picture for everybody. It's not, you know, it's not necessarily like me because I lean right um, going, yeah, they do this. They, they're actually doing it without like, so you're. Mm. Yeah, that, 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 that kind of su- that I, I can see how you, one would feel that pretty much sums it up. Yeah. You, know, you literally fabricated a story to push an agenda. Which crying on TV. This guy's the, faking all the media. You know, like the media every day does this. But the fact that he was so specific and his motive was so what like was he made, the motive? He, he made to, sh- his motive to, was to advance his career. He wanted people to look at that and feel bad for him, and then he gets more publicity. He gets a- that was his personal motive. Um, but a, another, yeah, I guess you're right. You know that that's his personal motive, but that situation as a whole is meant to just maybe not he doesn't even mean to drive race relations further apart than they already are but the environment that this country is in right now the state that it's in the fact that that's your golden ticket that's really unfair it's low to everybody that is so called you know like a victim like everybody that has quote unquote right white privilege the fact that somebody that's black spanish or whatever sees a mo- you know a financial opportunity at showing the world that you're a racist you know there's there's monetary gains for him to be made by doing that right it's a fucked it's a fucked up system that we have right now and from what i've read you know and I, this dude is it, it's a, he's a schmuck and the fact that he it was almost like wow maybe we can trust the press again maybe we can trust the justice system he's because a fag. but he did it Can't say that word anymore. Uh, no, I don't mean that in like homosexually. But he is I mean, homosexual. Like, no, I know he is homosexual. But you can't I don't call mean gay it. people fags. Well, I mean it in a nah, different way. You can way. say whatever you want. All right, go ahead. I think when you when you know it's funny because that's a word now that ten years ago or whatever. I think it was still offensive to people, but it was almost like nobody gave a fuck. Yeah. And it was just I don't know. So when I hear fag, I don't think homosexual now anymore. I think yeah, that's like, not even how I mean faggy, it. like gay, like if. If you're describing something to me and you're like, yo, man, that that shit's gay. And I'm like, all right, cool. Like, if you tell me, hey, I had, you know, I went to this place today. It was fucking gay as fuck. I think that it was, you know, like boring or lame. I don't think that there were dudes or women having sex with each other all the time. I just think it's gay. And listen, I'm okay. You know, like Joe Rogan said, hey, if you don't want me to use the word gay to describe shit, that's fine. But how else am I going to describe gay shit? (laughs) It was a bit, I probably ruined it, but he did it and it was hilarious. No, it actually kind of makes sense. Point. Yeah. Yeah. But so the Samoa dude, you know, if nobody, if you haven't followed the story, he's an actor on, on what show is he on? Empire. He's an actor on the show Empire. And he was apparently assaulted by two white guys that yelled racial slurs at, racial slurs at him. And beat him up. Beat him up, robbed him. And said something along the lines of, My "This God. is Trump country now, you know. This is Trump is <laughs> Trump's America, and oh, boohoo me, no, poor Jesse Smollett. Hey, man, here, here's some donations, here's some money, here's a new role in a, you know, all black comedy, whatever the case is. Then come to find out, this piece of shit paid people to stage an assault and pretend it was race related, race related, just to further his career." And now it's like, all right, great. Like, at least we caught him. I started to believe, hey, maybe the press does care about, you know, honesty. And maybe the government is actually going to prosecute this dude. But now all that went away either today or yesterday when it came out that Chicago dropped all the charges on him. So, yeah. And do you know that the, I guess the attorney, the DA, it's a female, black female, that she's the one that literally didn't want to prosecute so apparently, and I'm not sure if this is true, but George Soros donated $480,000 to her campaign. I'm not sure if it's true or not. That motherfucker just has ties to everything, huh? Well, everything left related. Everything left and everything slimy, it seems like George Soros. Well, you know what? That stuff happens on the right, too. There's a lot yeah, of- Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, the brothers, I forgot who their names are. Farley brothers? No. The Isley brothers? No. The Wright brothers. Mm. Mario brothers. Yes. <laughs> gotcha. But uh, I mean, like a lot of rich people, they donate, you know, campaign shit and all that, whatever. But anyway, I, I, you, this guy's a fucking, he, he's a disgrace. He, he's like a disgrace for a human. George Soros? 
Well, him too, but I'm saying the Justin Smollett. Smollett. Like, well, well, let's stick to like him being um, the the charges being dropped. Yeah, obviously you don't you don't agree with that being okay. Well, I don't necessarily know what the charges were. What? How do you? What do you charge somebody for faking a a hate crime? Filing a fake police report. Okay, I. That's still kind of minor compared mm. to people like want him that you know they want to hang him, they want to shoot him, they want to kill him, they want to you know all kinds of stuff. Um, even I, I think he got charged with disorderly conduct. That's all you can, and it only cost. I, I should say own. Um, you know, comp- relatively speaking, I think only ten thousand dollars. That's what his bail was. So what, oh, okay. what actually? So, yeah. So he was arrested. He was let out on bail, which was ten k, and he had to do community service. So what ended up happening is when they dropped these charges, the agreement for him was to forfeit his bail. So normally, if you, you know if you're innocent or the case is dismissed, you get your bail money back. Right. The agreement with him by the prosecutor was that hey, you know, you're going to forfeit that bail, but we'll drop the charges, and you have to do community service or whatever the case is. And that's what they agreed to. Um, I mean, it's tough because to charge him with more than what the law states you can charge him with is like, what would against, you charge him with, though? Right. It's against our system. But you almost kind of want to look at it as the, how dangerous your false accusation was. You know, like what could come of that? Like you could spark riots in that town. You could say inciting, you know, inciting you could, a yeah, panic or inciting you could, a riot. Yeah, you could be inciting well, let me throw uh, this at a you. statewide or even a countrywide <laughs> riot. Not any more than, let's say, the KK rallying or Black Panthers yeah, well, that's, rallying that's somewhere. That's why he only got charged with that Disorderly one. conduct. And no, he got charged with the... Uh, falsifying or... The <coughs> false police report. It says that it's a class four felony and it can be one to three years and up to 25 grand. Oh, see, I think even that's minute. Right, but you know, but I think he, yeah, sh- he I think he should have, yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean he sh- he should probably the fact that he did it, and it was so premeditated, and it was to have a direct, um, v- like benefit to him financially, and knowing the damage that it can cause, you know, people do like he should probably be punished the maximum. Well, how about this? Like you know, not going off subject. It's 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 relative to what we're talking about, you know. CK Colin Kaepernick he knelt during the, the national anthem. Yeah. That could be along the same lines lines as causing a uh you know a disruptive reaction. Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah, but with, then you can argue freedoms. He wouldn't even be charged with the same. Right. Well, that's what I'm saying. He's not Smollett, breaking any. Well, Smollett like, actually broke a law. Kaepernick didn't break a law. No, no. I'm saying as far yeah. when you when you add in there, you know. The the possibility of starting a riot. Well, I mean that that really means nothing. Because you're not breaking a law. I mean, anything that you say, do, act, could mm. start a riot. You, All right, you know fair what I'm enough. Yeah. So, what do you know? Why, or do you have any idea why his uh, charges were dropped? Probably because the fucking DA or the prosecutor is like in cahoots with him, and just maybe she's a lefty leaning. Remember the think of the the message that he put out there. You know, like it's okay to Trump, do this. No, Trump Trump supporters and Trump. Everybody's racist, and as a black person, I was assaulted because of Trump. You know, it's a very anti-Trump staging of a crime. Or pro-victimized but they, agenda. They, but then he wouldn't have specifically yelled out, this is Trump's country. You know, he wouldn't have added that part to his story. Well, no, what I'm saying That's is that... That's a direct, you know, shot at... He could at, also be selling to um, the pe- an audience, the community, the, the, the country that, look, black people are victimized here. Um, this is a prime example. Yeah, but th- there's a lot of ways to do that without adding Trump into it. The fact oh, that they yeah, yelled yeah, out yeah, Trump, I agree. Absolutely, you know, yeah. so there, there's an agenda there. And what's extremely interesting to me is that the how do I word this? So the superintendent of the Chicago Police Department. Yeah, he fucking hates that guy. Oh, he's very, very against him, and he wants him prosecuted, and he doesn't want him. this case to be gone, which is great for him. However, he was contacted or somebody high up on the prosecution was contacted by Michelle Obama's former chief of staff, right. which is basically her right-hand person. So she obviously has a direct Wait, tie Michelle to Michelle Obama. Obama. There's the chief Hold of staff. A chief right, of staff go. is pretty much like your executive assistant. Um, so the chief of staff for Michelle Obama reached out to this department 
or the prosecution and made them aware that that administration, the Obama administration, was unhappy with how the case was being investigated. You know, obviously leaning on them to say, hey, let's right. cut this shit, you know, sweep it under the rug. So it just leaves a lot of questions like why the fuck would the Obamas have any stake invested on whether or not he, he should gets, be charged, you know, because he a, broke the law. It's a huge puppet show, an act, a charade again. Against Trump. Yeah, I think it's... And they have, you know... The, <laughs> I hate to say it, but I mean, I, and maybe this is me, you know, uh, conspiracy theory, tin hat, whatever the fuck it's called. But I mean, like, maybe all these leftist celebrities, powerful people are all in cahoots. I don't know. True. It seems like they're all got each other's back and... I don't know, except for, which is surprising, the chief of police in Chicago, which I figured, I, I, I automatically assumed, and this is stupid of me. What's that? <laughs> what is that? Audio? Um, Get your shit I just, together, man. <laughs> I, I just, yeah, I just, I assumed that he would probably stick up for this guy, too. I'm all excited. I thought it was like a video related to this case, and it's it fucking, was. he's like buying extends over there. Really extends. That's it. Huh. So, um, speaking of celebrities, speaking, uh, of <laughs> speaking, of, speaking of celebrities, I thought it was pretty funny to see that a video resurfaced of fucking um, Cardi B on her Instagram, just basically bragging about how she would drug men and then rob them. Uh, what, what bitch like what <laughs> what what bitch you were just bill cosbying everybody and and it's okay Nothing's gonna happen and what's incredible is so i i think the people that s still support bill cosby and the people that are sticking up for these mother you're out of your fucking mind all right i don't care if he's your brother your sister part of your community or what like that's a monster this bitch is out here like george can you pull up her, that whatever that is article in her video but when you're just you're, and I'm not sugarcoating this. She drugged men and would rob them. I mean, and she was a down and dirty stripper in like the Bronx or Brooklyn. Right. She's a hood rat. I'm sure oh, she yeah. did whatever the fuck to do whatever yeah. the fuck she wanted. Right. But, but she tried to spin it in a way where it's like, listen, you know, I just did what I had to do. But listen, fuck you, bitch. Like, you don't get to, you don't get to pull that I was just hustling and struggling to take care of my family. If you get caught robbing walmart for some fucking canned goods i listen i'm not really going to be mad at you if you you know your story to me is that listen i just had to do what i had to do you're already a stripper like just go strip and take their money like why do you got to drug them and rob them you don't have to do all that shit scumbag. you fucking criminal ass bill cosby bitch <laughs> she should be in jail that's Absolutely. outrageous and people support her do not I, i'm like are you out of your tree that's that's crazy can you play the video can we see the video uh, no. you can't find it <laughs> On ET online. Oh, you don't say, huh? It's just, yeah. I, I think you know what. And the one of the worst parts about this is that she's the the newest like role, role model, model for, for like young woman, women. Like young woman. Yeah. I'm just going, geez, this lady. Like, and I'm not going to sit here and say like. So during my time, it was you know uh, Madonna. Let's say, or not my time, but I mean when I was younger. In my, Calm know, down, Grandpa. Yeah, right. Um, she's on the <laughs> it stage, was Marilyn Monroe, around, singing "Like a Virgin," and everybody's like, "Oh shit, that's like, you know, provocative." Whoa. Right. And now we've come. We we've evolved. I shouldn't even say evolved because evol that sounds like we're, we're devolving. Like, yeah, we're, we're devolving. <laughs> right, exactly. Because now we got fucking Cardi B. What is she sell fucking furniture? Yeah, but well, she's she's skillful. You know, she's a good artist. You know, her music is. I don't think so at all. Well, I think you the don't music have to. Part comes from the record label and the producers. Maybe, but whatever. She's she's, she's selling just a lot. A poster child for the music. Whatever is happening, you know, it's working. She's catchy. You know, she's got a lot of good jams with Bruno Mars. I fuck with him. Um, uh, but, see, Bruno Mars, he's talented, in my opinion. I mean, well, I mean, she's a stripper, act. bro. Have you ever stripped? It takes a lot. I'm, well, you're up on the pole. There's twerking involved. I'm sure that she's got some some glute muscles, some yeah, upper arm strength. So. But the the point to me is that this this all of these stories about sexual assault and sexual harassment from you know this hashtag Me Too movement where people are Blech. losing their jobs from fucking 
you know, accidental stop. hugs that happened 10 years ago. Yeah, you know, whatever the stop. case is, people are really being brought, these cases are being brought to light years and years after the fact. And it's usually a misunderstanding of what was that dude, um, you know, that's in politics that was just in the Kavanaugh. fucking Kavanaugh. You know what I mean? This was what, 10, 20 years ago. He had sex with a woman. She remembers it differently, blah, blah, blah. But it was brought to the point where it was in front of a judge. Yeah. And, I and think now this woman is actually, hold um, one sec. She's actually admitted and bragging about, she said that if you can see her quote, it was something along the lines of, yeah, I would say, okay, definitely. Like you want to fuck, then meet me at this hotel. We'll meet here. And then she says, I would drug them and then rob them. And if they fucked in between, that's a sexual assault, whether you want it to be or not. You know, if you drug somebody and then fuck them, like... If you unknowingly drug them, if we both pop E together and, you know, you you let me lick your asshole, then it is what it is. I hope you're not you talking know? to me. I am talking. No, <laughs> but that's an, I, that's obviously not assault. But when you unknowingly drug somebody, dude, and then and rob them and her excuse was, oh, I had to do what I had to do. These were guys that, you know, I've dated. You know why it's going to slide? Hold on. She said, these are guys that I've dated, which immediately I find a hole in that story. Because if it's somebody that it doesn't you even dated, matter. if it's somebody that you dated, well, it does. It, it immediately she's a liar now. Because why would you tell somebody that you're dating to meet up with you at a hotel so you guys can fuck? Well, not only yeah, so you don't get arrested. Well, not only well, that. She no, obviously no. got paid for sex, so there she had a lot if, of people. She was George. Dating. If well, she was a prostitute. Then that's one thing or another. Don't say that you were dating them. Oh no, but she's saying dating because then she's not a prostitute. Well, she's no, dating and got presents in cash. I think she's gotcha, just trying gotcha. to sugarcoat something because, it, it, in all oh, honesty, yeah. I don't think it matters if even if you were dating, you can't drug somebody and fuck them against their will and or rob them. Whether you're dating, whether I think, you're, but we're, we're assuming the the fucking part. Let's make that clear. Like, in nowhere does oh, it yeah, say I'm she sorry. drugged um, them and fucked them. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm I saying if that happened, them. you know, which I'm not a rocket scientist, but so whether you're if, if you drug me, that drug better act real fast before I fall asleep without fucking you know, right. That, if that was the intention, if you're meeting me at a hotel to have sex with me and you drug me, I'm probably going to be ready to go. Like that drug has to kick in pretty fast. So I don't want to assume, but ketamine, it wouldn't surprise me if there was some fucking involved there. Like George just said, you know, she's saying she was dating these guys, meeting them at a hotel. Well, rob, that's what I'm saying. Drugging they, and robbing them. Let's say it was totally legit. Let's say they were dating. Yeah. You still can't drug people right. and rob them. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you're dating or not. So no, I agree. And um, I think that this is probably going to turn into a bigger story, and it should. And you She's have to, just another scumbag. That's what I think. You have to. Well, I never thought that until this, you know, uh, until this came out. Because I have nothing. Listen, man. She grew up in a poor neighborhood. She started stripping, w did whatever she had to do legally, I would condone, and then got her way out of it. Not even legally, just morally right. You know, and got her way out of it, you know, and became, you know, successful. So I'm that, I'm cool with that, you know. Like, her music isn't super appealing to me. It's not meant to appeal to me. But it's not the worst, you know, it's not the, I, some of it's catchy. You know, I don't right. hate her. I don't know her as a person. But when I read this, that makes me think she's a scumbag. Prior to this, right. it didn't matter. But, I mean, that's just, and it, if she's not punished, it's such a double standard. And men are the victim of that double standard. If she's not oh, punished she's, from this. Yeah, absolutely. But I don't think you can say that she won't be, you know, because that, that whole hashtag Me Too movement has been... I mean, it's our turn. Men have been sexually harassed just as much as no, no not anybody just as yet. much, not I just as much so. as women. That's crazy. I think so. No, not not even close. I wish we had a woman on here to talk about that because I think that's a crazy statement to make, dude. I don't. Dave Chappelle just did a skit. You know how many times somebody has called me honey, sweetheart? Yeah. The 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 there's we a just, big difference. It's, just, it's accepted a lot more, <laughs> and that's what the the culture that we've been brought up in. So therefore, it's not nah. even. It doesn't even click as something as sexual harassment to us. Because you're not in danger. That's a big factor. Of, well, no, sexual harassment has nothing to do with being in danger. It's how you feel. It's based, Sexual harassment is 100%. If I called a woman a sweetheart. It's unwanted. We'll put it this way. If I was at work and I called a woman a sweetheart, like immediately there would be, there would be a problem. There would be an issue. Whereas if, and it happens all day, every day. It just happened at my last job. Um, women calling guys sweethearts and honey and. But because we're programmed to not even, you know, not I'm not saying we were maliciously in program, programmed. I'm just saying because it was, it's never been anything, mm. it still is nothing today, even though the standard is exactly the same. It should be, I should say. We just don't notice it because we just don't 
that's not the way that we were the cult we the culture that we were raised in but i think it happens just as frequent just as much women go to strip joints too you know what i'm saying and i don't know less I frequently than men is it i don't know um compare yeah first of all as as somebody that has been into a strip club once maybe twice in my day there's always more there's always more men in there and it's not even it's not close no no i'm well i'm talking about a a male strip joint okay and there are probably 100 to 1 female strip clubs compared to male strip clubs yeah you're probably right there yeah. yeah you know they're just we're just hornier you know like like our not even that we're hornier just i don't know we just I'm more apt to go spend money on I naked guess bitches. My point is whether it, whether the the ratio is greater from men to women. I don't even care. You're just uh, saying it shouldn't be a double standard. I'm that and the fact that men go through sexual harassment all day, every day too. Yeah, is, yeah. Is, is, is just never brought up. I would just disagree with that. I don't. I don't think it's the case, and I don't think it's nearly as um, doesn't have the same effect on you. Because, because of to, our culture. No, because of our DNA and, and the fact that... No. 100%, dude. Let me give you a scenario. Yeah. You know, take the average man and the average woman. Obviously, I know there are scenarios, but we're going to talk about the average for a second. Right. If you have the average man in a room with a woman and that woman decides that she's going to have sex with you against your will, there's a high chance that you're just going to be able to get out of there safely. That's not what we're talking about. Hold on, hold on. But, well, that's where it all stems from. You're talking about so, rape. That's where it all stems from. Hear me out. But on the woman's side, if you're in a room with a man and he decides he's going to have sex with you against your will, chances are that's going to happen just because he's physically dominant on average. Well, you're assuming, though. Well, you, there's I'm, a lot of assumptions there. None, I'm just breaking it down in a simple way because sexual harassment and assault kind of ties to that because that's the worst case scenario from sexual harassment. So we, I don't think you can ever really put yourself in... A, the woman's shoes on average unless you're in a room full of jacked fucking gay dudes where you really don't have what an the escape fuck are you talking about i'm just saying you know like dave Chappelle had a great skit on this man he said that you know when he was a kid he did something he did some job where they paid him 25 25 k in yeah. cash and he was on the bus holding this bag and it hit him like holy fuck man i have this bag full of cash if anybody else on this bus you know knew what was in this bag motherfuckers would kill me for this right you know that's people would ki- dudes would kill me for the money that's in this bag if they knew what was here and he said that can be what it's like having a pussy yeah um, maybe i mean i i can i can loosely see what point you're trying to make i don't think your examples are very good but i, I, I get it w- w- when, when sometimes saying, i don't break things down simple simple enough no it's not that at all <laughs> I, I think accurate is more of of because when you're when you're when you're trying to use an analogy in that sense, I mean, you're assuming that the man is automatically bigger than the woman. I just, no, I didn't assume using, that. If we can, using, we can pick one single smaller dude and a bigger man. Of course I'm sa- I specifically right. said women and men in general, we are bigger in general. Okay. Yeah. And that, in that, in that sense, I agree with you, but yeah. going back to the whole sexual harassment thing, I mean, it's not always rape. Yeah. Sexual harassment is just sexual in nature. Yeah, there are you're levels talking, to that shit. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Touching somebody on the shoulder, patting them on the back, uh, touching their ass, I don't know, whatever. Um, that stuff happens to men all the fucking time. It's I agree. It's just not I still don't think it's as thing. much as it happens to women, though. It, I, I don't know. It, I, I don't it, know how you would... You, uh, even if you're right, though, it could not be a thing because, again... Well, that's why I said I don't care about the ratio. Yeah, Let's say it happens the, twice as much to women. But the feeling of it is a different feeling because... And I, it goes back to the worst-case scenario because of our... Physical dif- no, because of our physical differences. If a girl no, is touching not. you in a way that you don't want, you can grab her hand and <laughs> move it away. And if she, if you want her to stop, you're going to be able to make her stop. Unless you know, that, she's bigger than me and stronger. Uh, right, and that very isolated incident, yeah. But on average, the average man was is going to be able to just have her stop completely. Where if you're the woman in that scenario, you know... If he wants to continue, he's going to be able to continue. He's going to be able to physically dominate himself over you. Right. And that's the only reason why I can think that f- coming from a woman's perspective, it may have such a, a woman? <laughs> such a, you know, different effect than we do, you know, uh, than we understand it. Yeah, I maybe obviously we're chemically different biologically, physically different. Yeah, yeah physically and all that stuff. I agree with you there. I, I like I said, just to make a point really fast. Let's say it happens twice as much to women, to men, 
I don't even give a fuck. Whatever that ratio is, I, I okay, sure. There is a huge gap in how much it happens to men because men don't report it and blah, blah, blah because of the way, uh, I think because of the way we're nurtured in, in life, in, in our culture and stuff like that. I don't think it has anything really to do with genetics. You might be right. I, I, I have nothing to back what, I, what I'm mm. saying. I'm just, it's just, I just know how opinion. I feel, you know, if a, if a woman grabs my shoulder and I'm like, all right, chill out. Like, don't touch me like that. I mean, and I, I'm not worried. I'm not worried that it's going to go any further than that. Where I think, you know, a woman may be worried that she has no control over how far it goes. I've had women come up to me and grab me up, right on, grab my junk, grab yeah. my fucking fruit basket. And, you know, if it may sound like fucking uh, gay or whatever, or, uh, weak or whatever, blah, 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 but that shit, I was just like, yo, like, I'm, uh, I don't know, what the fuck? You probably felt violated, right? Yeah, if you were good looking, I but wouldn't do you, care. But did you feel like you were in any <laughs> danger? I don't know. You just don't expect stuff like that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That's what so, I think yeah, is a big like, difference. Yeah. So, you know, like, it's hard for you to be I don't ever really feel in danger with anything. So, I mean, I mean, it's all relative, I guess. All right. Anyway. So, yeah. <laughs> anyway, Cardi B, like, hopefully she gets charged. That shit was whack. And that, that can't happen, you know. And, and, it, and she can't be just, it can't be a slap on the wrist because she's a woman, you know. And I hate to say that. I don't think that. She should be punished anymore, but she should be held to the same standard, man. If you're drugging people and robbing Especially them, especially as a celebrity, no, uh, same standard. You know, like no. What I'm saying anyway. is, like, if you're, you, you should be smarter because it's more like you're less likely to get away with it as a celebrity. I'm saying other celebrities are getting fucking, you know, pinned to the cross. So should Cardi B. Yeah, like, that's fuck, what I'm saying. Think about Louis C.K. Man, his life was turned upside down. Jobs were taken away, and he didn't even do anything. He just jerked off in front of some people. <laughs> I heard that he even asked to do it first, too. Like, how do you punish a guy that says, hey, do you mind if I jerk off in front of you before I do it? You Fucking just say society no. Are, you just say no. Bitches, like. You just say no. Like, nah, man. <laughs> I'm good. I think people just like to complain. <laughs> You're just and like, yeah, cool. Do it. I don't even know anymore. Yeah, but all right. So we, we buried that topic. But the last thing I wanted to talk about, man, was um, you, do you remember that movie Get Out? Huge movie, dude. Like, it, you got to oh. get more related into pop culture and what's going on. But this. <laughs> no, nah, but this this was, a, you know, it was a big, big blockbuster like movie. You're not in the know-how. <laughs> yeah. We're on a podcast. You're not in the now. <laughs> no, nah, so um, the movie Get Out was a few years ago, and, and it was a big hit. You know, it's uh, up <laughs> on the. me down because I haven't seen it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, but check it out when you get, because it is a great movie, but it was, it's for the country it's culturally significant because it was you know it was a black director all black cast so obviously it's what year it's what did this come out two yeah what two years ago two years ago and yeah. who gives a fuck was a black director well it, it makes a difference you know if you watch the movie you'd In understand 2017 it. yeah um like, it, i gotta say not, 1990 bro, if you just Spike Lee if was... you would listen for a few minutes you, you'd understand it's yeah, not I guess so. it's not that he's a black director that makes the movie successful but the fact that it's uh, it was a great movie. It was there hasn't been a great horror movie out in a while, you know. So he kind of, but he's trying to replicate that movie with like to make it its own genre, like a just black horror. And hey, man, the movie was great. I'm down with it. It was good. He came out with a new movie called Us, where he did the same thing, you know, black lead, black family. I want the movie is called see that. Us. All right, so it's the same director. Yeah. So. Get Out, and now he has Us. I actually heard which, people left the movie because it was so scary. I, I've i read quite the opposite, and surprisingly from a lot of people I know that really um, I would export him. Um, it, it did really well in its opening weekend, meaning a lot of people went to see it. Yeah. But I don't think that necessarily equates to it being a good movie because most of the feedback that I've been seeing was that it's terrible. Well, Rotten Tomato p- gave it 94. 94. Mm. Okay, 95. The lady that I so Beth and I actually went to go see the movie and it was all it was sold out. Then we tried to book tickets ahead of time. They're all sold out. Yeah, there's a lot of hype I'm behind like, Holy it. Holy shit. A lot of hype behind it. I hope it's not yeah. a lot of hype. I hope it's actually Oh, a no, good movie. it's it's <laughs> definitely a lot of hype I mean, because Rotten Tomatoes is pretty good, pretty reliable for Yeah, you know, movie review. Yeah. They they can be. Again, I'm everything that I'm saying is based on people that have seen the movie. I'm not yeah. taking a critic's word for it. Just, you know, the friends that I speak to daily uh, that I interact with on right, Facebook. Right, right. So not very credible, uh, I guess. In a sense, what well, we have, in a national. I mean, like, if we have if we have common, you're not credible. But if I know that we have common interests, and you tell me that a movie is no good, that I wouldn't like it, I'm probably going to take your word 
at a higher level than I would Rotten Tomatoes because I know you, you know, and you know me, you know what I might like and yeah, we yeah. share interests. You know, it makes a little more sense than me, you know, there's a two bajillion people in California. If all of them go and like it, what does that have to do with me? Right. You know, so I don't know where Rotten Tomatoes is from, what their motives are, if they have any stock in what movies they review high or low, but from... um. <laughs> Yeah, from what I've just, seen, they just review movies. Yeah, Rotten Tomatoes is cumulative. There's three, yeah. 360 reviews. Yeah, there could, there could definitely be. I don't know. Everything has an agenda these days. Who the fuck knows? But <laughs> moving on, yeah. He, the point of this is that he made a comment after the movie's release that he doesn't see himself ever casting a white lead in any of his movies again. Yeah, because he's racist as fuck. And I thought that was funny because obviously, with the the way the culture is today. If that was somebody like, imagine Steven Spielberg saying, yeah, I'm never going to cast a black lead in any of my movies. He'd probably be crucified for it. Yeah. You know, so the fact that this Jordan Peele is able to say that, I mean, what what are your thoughts on that? Do you think that's... I I think it's just typical again. I'm not going to sit here and, you know, say that... I'm going to assume that he's a left-leaning, leftist, whatever, blah, blah, blah. They get away with everything. Doing everything. Uh, you know, just they? like Smollett's getting away with. What do you mean they? They the left. Damn son. All right. Yeah. Anybody like celebrities? Pop culture's left leaning, so I mean, they get away with saying and doing a lot of shit. That you know, if the if the right, I, you know, if they did it, they would get persecuted and all this other bullshit. But hey, fuck that guy. I'm saying it, but you know, because he's a black guy that said that versus a white guy that's saying it. Trying to, I don't know if Steven Spielberg is conservative well, or liberal. Okay, so take politics out of it. Yeah. Just a black guy saying that again. Right. Yeah, I don't give a flying fuck. Don't ever fucking cast a white guy. Who gives a shit? Yeah, I just feel like it's, it's a, I think it's a stupid thing to say as far as like PR goes and, you know. Yeah, but it, I mean, if that's your First of all, I think it's a stupid thing to do because you should just want the best actor. You know, like... It, you're trying to forcefully put some kind of equal opportunity into your movies. It's like, okay, you know, that that's going to last for a little while, you know, because right. they'll, you'll have the support of the community and hey, but ultimately, man, people are paying to see movies and if the movies start to suck, you should just focus on making the best movie that you can. Absolutely. You know, if you have to get a white actor for that or Chinese actor for that, just do that. Right. So I don't, I don't agree with it as, and again, who the fuck am I to talk to him about business, but... I think it's silly. I think you should just want the most talented people well, in your along movies. The lines about the, but I do agree that if he was a white guy that said that, there would be a very, very different spin on it. Absolutely. And a very, very, very different uh, result mm. or reaction. But it's just like the, the bakery that didn't want to make that cake for the gay couple. Like, I think they should have the right. Who gives a fuck? They don't want to, mm. they don't want to make cakes for gay people? Okay, go to another fucking bakery. Another this guy bakery. doesn't want to hire... White yeah. people, all right, don't fucking... That bakery story was fucked up, too, especially because now you're talking about... and Because that baker wasn't saying they couldn't just come buy any cake. You know, if you want to buy a cake, God bless you, take the cake. Yeah. You know, but what he was saying is that he wouldn't specifically create a personalized cake for them. So now are you, you're trying to force somebody to create art for you? Like, what the fuck? That doesn't even make sense. He's not telling you can't buy anything from the store. He's saying that you, you want him to artistically create something... That goes against his beliefs. Just don't, don't be yeah, stupid. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fucking ridiculous. What's great is that couple. Go ahead. I think that any, and I haven't really put a lot of thought into this, so I might, you know, after thinking about it more, and maybe after even this discussion we're about to have about it, maybe I might rescind. But I think any, you know, business owner has, should have the right to not serve or, for whatever reason, they want. Hmm. I used to, I used to agree with that, and then. The fear of what the you know the the country's worst case scenario like the rotten history that it has is I don't know man you know I feel like there are a lot of ways that could go south. But so put it this way: where where do you value not you specifically, but anybody speaking to anybody that's watching or listening? Where do you <laughs> how much pen? value do you put in uh, being raw and truthful and honest versus? All right, well, you're just making me fucking do this, so now I'm doing it. Meaning mm. now you're painting a picture for everybody. For instance, let's say if a white guy, let, no, let's take, if a black guy owns a business and he doesn't want to. Or he's a director for a movie. Okay, yeah, and he doesn't want to hire white people, he should have, he should have that fucking right. Mm. Okay, Which hey, is yeah. crazy because it's, it's almost like against the law, you know, like to. It's discriminatory. It's but definitely discriminatory. There's a bunch of discrimination 
lawful discrimination. You know the couple that the the gay couple with that cake, the baker yeah. that wouldn't bake it. It's not like they just stumbled into a bakery saying, "Hey, we need a wedding." No, they cake. had an agenda, dude. They were going from bakery to bakery to bakery looking for somebody that told them no. So they went to like dozens of bakeries yeah, it's before more they acting said, charade. It's and so fucking like, what kind of human are you, man? But yeah, you got too much fucking time on your hands. To, seriously, to do but, that. Other than that, man, I got nothing for you, man. I'm ready to wrap this bitch up. It's been what, George? About an hour and a half. Yeah, that's it. I don't think we got anything else, man. We got the fucking Polish popo over there giving us the P's and Q's behind the mic. And we got my man, what I call it earlier, the Irish assassin. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Jeff Warga, I hope Debbie heals fast. All right. All right, guys. Thank you for listening to episode 16. And just to wrap this up, uh, thank you to our endorsers, Division Street Auto, Tops Electric Showroom and Gallery, Onyville Tire, JW and Son Construction, and Donkey Dodgers Poker. Um, if you need to contact any of them, and just remember that if you mention the J Squared podcast, you heard the ad on the J Squared podcast you will get a discount. Um, and if you need to contact them, just listen to the beginning of this episode. All right, guys. Thank you.